What's up, people? What's up? What's up? Holy crap. Is this lagging that bad? <laughs> Why is... Get out of here, transition. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Welcome. Look at my show. Don't double spend me, bro. Don't double spend me, bro. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's going to be a fun one. Um, some very... Um, this is going to be a show about nuance. Very nuance. Nuance discussion happening. Um... But there's a it, there's a clear side. No, there's not a clear side because it's nuance. Anyways, we'll get into it. Uh, let's start off with uh, some news, shall we? Uh, I guess this kind of ties into what we were saying before. But our Bitcoin is still censored. Um, yeah, we'll come back to this one actually. And uh, so the uh, the gym friend meme. Everybody remembers the gym friend meme, right? Uh, there was a meme account called at gym friend. And he just, like, wasn't even, like, vicious or anything. He just, like, said gym friend and things, you know? Like, gotta go work out. Even the Kelvin, Kelvin Irie even responded to one of his, like, tweets saying, like, yo, you shouldn't juice at your old age. <laughs> like, like, it was actually him. It was, it was ridiculous. But anyways, uh, I guess it was temporarily restricted because uh, the censorship resistance of cryptocurrency doesn't apply to Twitter, apparently. Um, if you're a Blockstream employee, and so of course, dastardly Davis uh, Carbon. Thanks, haircut. Thank you, thank you. It is nice, nice and short hair. I trim the beard. I want to cut a little bit more off the beard, but uh, we'll do that later. Uh, so yeah, so then um, this crypto deleted account, which is in the same episode, Salina. Is that Lena Sashay? What's up, girl? <laughs> Sashay. No, not Sashay. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Last name. Uh, this is Jameson Loop. Uh, because the cost of node you have to plug it into itself. And so this is the crypto deleted account responding to Jameson who like wrote two different articles about how to like exploit the crypto deleted bot, which would literally just like keep track of crypto popular crypto Twitter accounts that would delete tweets and it would just post it on Twitter. And um, long story short, this crypto deleted account is now on Telegram. It's in a channel and almost has like, almost has like a thousand subscribers, which is a lot for a Telegram channel actually. And uh, it has, like, a public group now and a private group. But, uh, anyways, Jameson was like, yo, this this account uh, violated section 1.b.5 of the Twitter developer policy um, that do not exceed their circumvent limitations, which is, like, okay. But then Jameson literally, like, wrote a bot to spam the bot. So uh, it was very hypocritical, but, you know, that's... That's kind of par for the course, you know. So, anyways, it, this is a good little article. Uh, I recommend uh, checking it out. I think I retweeted it, so you can go check out my Twitter. So, uh, other thing that happened recently was that uh, the Wasabi wallet, which is a BTC wallet, uh, it does coin join. It does coin join, which is a way to mix coins together trustlessly. And um, basically, if you're on Binance, I think this is SGD. I think that's Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. Uh, so that this guy, he would withdraw to Wasabi and like coin join, and this anonymizes your coins. Uh, but base, then he got a withdrawal suspended due to risk management, and so they were tracking his coins after they were were withdrawn, and uh, uh, they're like, "Yo, you can't withdraw anymore because you like to mix your coins, and that's not cool." And so uh, CZ actually. I responded, he said, Binance Singapore operates under the requirements set forth by uh, MAS. I'm guessing that's like some Singapore regulations or something. And he says, there are AML controls set in place, not something for us to decide. So uh, they're tracking your coins, boys and girls. So apparently you have to like move it from one from one account and then you can put it into your Wasabi. But, you know, that's going to. If you're using BTC, those fees are going to add up, guys. So just use Electron Cash and Cash Shuffle instead. That makes much, much, much more sense. Uh, other cool stuff. Uh, our very own uh, Purple Hoodie Boy, Poxed, Poxed, God, Poxed, I think it is. Uh, he's working on um, uh, implementing SLP token support into Bitcoin Cash J, which is a Java library for Bitcoin Cash. And uh, basically what this means is that uh, you'll be able to write a node, if I, <laughs> I believe him. I'm understanding this correctly. Uh, you'll be able to run a node that can support SLP, and so you don't have to basically rely on the unreliable Bitcoin.com socket. 
So, um, but yeah, so very cool. Um, the Bitcoin.com socket uh, SLP has been fairly unreliable, and we'll actually kind of get into it a little bit later uh, why it is. So, uh, let's get to the main event, shall we? So this is Hayden. Uh, we're gonna skip through um, this like very propaganda-ish, but hey, it gets the views right. So here we go. And dangerously easy to execute. Please note that in every case, the funds were returned to the merchant at the end of each demonstration. For this demonstration, I opted to use the Electrum wallet for Android. All an attacker must do is set up two wallets within the app, wallet A and wallet B. First, a transaction must be made from wallet A to wallet B with replace by fee enabled. The fee must be manually set to one Satoshi per byte. You must now disable replace by fee in wallet B but the fee must still be set to one Satoshi per byte when performing a transaction. The business will give you the QR code to pay for the goods and services, where now you use Wallet B to perform the transaction. After making a payment, the merchant will see a tick on their end, indicating to them that you are free to take the goods and services and the transaction is complete. After leaving, you can go back to Wallet A. By bumping up the transaction fee and rebroadcasting the transaction, it will overwrite the previous transaction you did from Wallet A to Wallet B this now means that the funds that you just sent to the merchant have disappeared back into your wallet B. But you've still got the goods and that means the merchant has successfully been double spent. I've got the payment history up. It says here $50, $712.50 paid. And this is the address that it was paid to. So if I copy this one and I go to uh, Blockchain Explorer, the balance says zero. Zero US dollars, zero BTC. But as you can see, I took the goods and services. There's no, no payment there. It's that easy to do on mobile. I'll show you once again now in a controlled environment from a desk. So what the heck did he just do? Well, he double spent a merchant uh, using BTC. So uh, how did he do this? Well, uh, he used this feature. Uh, it's technically not in the protocol. We'll kind of go into the nuance of this in a little bit because it's very, it's very kind of hard to wrap your head around. Uh, but he... Uh, in BTC, there's a, a, a feature essentially in uh, popular wallets such as Electron, Electrum um, wallet where you can, yo, what happened to my music? What's there? Uh, you can click a button basically and you're, it, uh, it enables you to replace your transaction that has a low fee with the transaction with the higher fee. But the key here is, is that you can change uh, the recipient of these coins um, in your second address so you can double spend with the click of a button as he just showed I mean he did wasn't even doing anything crazy. It's not some special software It's a wallet you can download from the Google Play Store um, and he did it and so uh, This is partly because the point-of-sale system uh, Travel by bit um, in which is mainly in Australia where Hayden is from uh, They they do look for replaced by fee flag transactions uh, on transactions that come to them, but what Hayden actually did is he uh, he first um, let's see I need to <laughs> need to uh, this is very complicated it's not complicated but so he sends it from wallet A to wallet B and this one has the RBF flag on it the replaced by fee flag and then from wallet B he sends it to the merchant and so the transaction he actually sent to the merchant does not have the replaced by replaced by fee. But since that transaction relies on the first transaction within his own wallet that he replaces, that second transaction can't happen anymore. And so then it just completely gets rid of this money. So, uh, wrecked. <laughs> uh, absolutely wrecked. So uh, we can talk a little bit more about what exactly Replace by Fee is. Uh, this is from 2015, actually. And uh, actually, the quick history of Replace by Fee, it was, it was implemented by Peter Todd uh, with the help of Mr. John Dillon. And if you didn't know who John Dillon is, that is, um, he was he was a self-admitted intelligence intelligence agent that had a bunch of private messages. Uh, he posts on Bitcoin talk forums, um, but yeah, he's he's a boogeyman, deep state guy, right? I mean, nobody knows who he is, uh, but he helped um, he helped fund Peter Todd uh, to create this replace by feet. And so, even at the time, J Jeff Garzik didn't like it. Charlie Lee, when he was still at Coinbase, didn't like it. Uh, Gavin and Drayson didn't like it. Uh, Adam Back actually said, blowing up zero confirmation transactions is vandalism. And so, uh, what the heck is this? And uh, it's called the... It's, 
so what Bitcoin has, uh, BTC and BCH, uh, is called the first scene rule. And this basically means when two transactions um, or blocks that build off the same dependency, whichever one the node saw first wins. And so uh, transaction one and transaction two, if you send transaction one and you send transaction two, like a couple seconds later or any time after, they're going to go with transaction one. And uh, this isn't technically in the protocol. This is all uh, mempool. So it's before it gets included into a block. And so zero confirmations obviously means it's not in a block. And uh, replaced by fee, um, you're allowed to replace this transaction even af like minutes after before before the transactions included into a block. And so uh, zero comp, again, it, it's not 100% bulletproof. Uh, replaced by fee does make it easier to um, to kind of mess with it. Uh, and so here's kind of, so, uh, so anyways, this video comes out and, um, and uh, crap, I didn't have the correct, uh, the correct article. Oh God. <laughs> oh dear Lord, dear Lord. No, 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 no. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Everybody loves to scroll. Okay, here it is. And so after this happened, um, this is travel by bit. This is different than all of the Bitcoin Cash accepting software uh, that uh, is used throughout the other countries. Travel by bit has, um, they have. <laughs> Bitcoin, BNB, Litecoin, and Tether is the currencies they currently accept. And it's powered by Binance is what it is. So, uh, yeah, there you go. They don't actually... Brutal Savage wrecked. So when did the code... When did the coins disappear from wallet C when the wallet A... Immediately or next block? Uh, immediately. The coins disappear immediately once they're replaced by fee. Wait, let me read that again. So when did the coins disappear from wallet C... Uh, yeah, so it gets replaced within the mempool, I believe, uh, because replaced by fee is just like, hey, everybody's going to take this one in the next block. So um, I believe Mark's in the chat, so he can he's smarter than me, so maybe he can confirm that. So that's what it means. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Travel by Bit, uh, they have a bunch of, they obviously kind of do online as well as in person. I think they also accept Lightning right now, too. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about lightning on this, but everybody loves lightning, right, guys? Right, guys? And so, uh, what happened after this? Well, uh, Travel by Bit guys were like, hey, we will be dropping Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash from this point of sale. That was literally happened this morning. And uh, he didn't give a time frame, and he said he moderated it to say they will wait until we see more attempted fraud. The mempool is just a plan to move coins. Yes, of course. Mempool is like nothing in the mempool is for sure. Uh, it's only for sure when it enters a block. So, and so this is zero comp is very. Um, it kind of relies on minor goodwill at the end of the day. But again, it's it's the ease of use of using RBF. Um, Bitcoin Cash miners don't actually like use RBF, and it's not in any Bitcoin Cash wallets. But technically, um, if a malicious miner wanted to, uh, they could. Uh, do RBF and include the higher fee transaction in the next block, and so uh, and so they they say if we see more of this taking place, we'd have to drop Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash on chain transactions on our merchants all across Australia. So they responded by uh, saying that hey, we're going to drop Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, even though it was just Bitcoin that was using it. So uh, <laughs> caught in the crosshairs, right, guys? And so uh, there's a little bit more in here. Um, and so, Hayden actually, I know it's kind of hard to see on here. Sorry about that. Uh, it's very hard to see, actually. So, this is from 2018. This is a Hayden screenshotted. Uh, September 23rd, 2018, Hayden actually, like, warned Travel by Big Guys, like, hey, you probably shouldn't, like, do BTC because you have a replaced by fee. And um, and then they uh, they were like, oh, I believe it's optional, which, which it is. And, again, you can check for the flag, but they didn't check for the parent transaction. So... Technically, this travel by bit could just look for the RBF flag in the transaction they receive and also the parent transaction transactions. Um, there's a 25 transaction unconfirmed limit uh, in the mempool. So, like, technically, you would have to look to make sure a transaction doesn't have 25 or 24 other transactions before it that, like, 
that it relies on because if that 24th transaction is RVF, you still have to watch out because if somebody could just click a button and undo 24, 25 transactions, right? And so, um, and so then he just like, this is Caleb Yeho, who is the CEO high up in, um, who is this guy? You know, he's a, uh, he's a founder. Yes. He says, but then he's, then he just like goes on about how is BCH going, chain going to incentivize to process transactions. If fees are close to nil, he just like kind of distracts from it completely. And then he says, actually, if I'm not mistaken, it was put in to help newbies who made the mistake of putting zero transaction fees and getting the coins stuck in transit. They can add more fee to make sure it goes through. Even in a block, it isn't for sure. Right, of course. Yeah, it's all probabilities. Um, but then you're looking at a chain rewrite. It's a bad It's a bad combo of two bad walls. Yes, this is true. Although, I don't know if you call having RBF bad. I mean, well, obviously, like, yes, it is, but... Um, it's kind of a BTC thing. When Hayden, oh, I'm just talking about Hayden. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, they kind of let's see. And so there's a. Oh, I feel. Anyways, they they basically said if if we see more of this taking place, and this was, I think it was worded a little differently in a chat somewhere. Uh, but it was like if we see more of this exploit, we're gonna drop Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So it's basically like a threat to Hayden, like, yo, stop doing this, otherwise we're going to drop Bitcoin and Bitcoin <laughs> cash. And so uh, Hayden actually doesn't really care because uh, there is a lot of Bitcoin cash merchants already in Australia, and uh, his stats are 93% of all of the transactions of cryptocurrency. Um, or is it just Bitcoin cash? Ah, yeah, it's right here. Okay, here, I'm going to read what uh, Caleb from uh, Travel by Bits said. Uh, this is from a Telegram group. He says, The truth is both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and many other blockchains are not suitable for retail point-of-sale transactions. There are trade-offs between user experience versus security. Because Travel by Bit is trying to push adoption, we do take zero confirmations for both Bitcoin and BCH and in insure the merchants from losses. The point-of-sale project is run as a non-profit community initiative to help educate users. Most community members already know this blockchain limitation and no one tries to defraud any merchant except Hayden. If he continues, we would have to drop Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash on-chain transactions on all of our merchants across Australia. This is okay as users can continue to pay Bitcoin via Lightning Network, which is not exposed to the same risk and is designed for instant retail transactions. Or they could use faster DPoS blockchains on our platform. Unfortunately, there isn't an alternative for Bitcoin Cash yet. And so, uh, as far as lightning goes, well, good luck trying to do that at scale. I mean, like, yeah, you can't technically, man, it's just so convoluted. <laughs> and then uh, John Pratt, who um, also said, I th he's another trial by big guy. He said, I forwarded this from a Facebook group for you. There's no revelation here for anybody that has been in Bitcoin scene for more than five minutes or has the slightest understanding of it. Bitcoins have always understood the danger of zero comp transactions. We didn't need Hayden to commit commercial fraud to remind us. We don't encourage zero comp, but Bcash relies upon it for merchant experience. Bitcoiners have always known that on-chain payments take an average of 10 minutes to confirm once, yada, 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 before which can, the coins can be double spent. The transaction that makes it on the blockchain with the one the miners successfully mine the blocks off first. So, uh... And so, uh, it is possible on BCH, okay? So, replace by fee is possible, but, again, no miner, like, actively does it. I mean, they could since Bitcoin Cash is only 2.5% of the, the hash rate at the moment because hash rate follows price, but uh, nobody does. And uh, maybe this video will piss people off enough that somebody will develop a wallet that has replaced by fee in it. <laughs> Dashworks. Dash works. He's a lightning. We're one out of ten works. <laughs> and so the transaction, Mark actually pointed this out in the video, the transaction history uh, on the merchant still had the transaction in it. So, uh, uh, on, on, sorry, on Hayden's wallet, still had the payment recorded. So, uh, <laughs> uh, wrecked. So, um, thanks for the follow, Carl. Uh, I did have some other stuff. 
so yeah hula hula is uh it's i believe hula is the underwriting service uh that hayden and the other people in australia use to um underwrite for bitcoin cash so people can spend their bitcoin cash at people can spend their bitcoin cash at merchants and um other people will just buy it straight from the merchant and so this allows merchants to keep fiat if they want to not have to hold bch and so uh BTC has been doing maybe $700 to $1,000 worth of payments each month on travel by bit. And so now that like that's that's nothing, right? Like a thousand bucks a month is not much. And so uh, travel by bit uh, does do a lot of volume online actually is, I think they do bill pay, a lot of bill paying stuff. Uh, but like as far as retail transactions, uh, Bitcoin Cash is basically dominating in Australia. I've got your double spend, bro. <laughs> Oh, and da 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 da. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's see here. So yeah. Um. So yeah. Obviously, like Hayden, like has told the CEO there is risk with RBF many times, and uh, this is how he disclosed it, and it, it was effective. I mean, they <laughs> they threatened to dropping Bitcoin now, so. <laughs> Uh, kind of uh, absolutely wrecked, savage, wrecked and savage. And so, uh, I have one thing. So, like, uh, so yeah, a mempool is is a state before things are included in a block. And so, like Mark said in the chat, everything in Bitcoin with transaction is probability. And so, uh, the probability of a double spend before a block is much higher than a double spend within a block where you rewrite the chain, right? And so, uh, again, it's the first scene rule. Um, it, there's risks, right? And so, uh, and so it, here's a site that often gets, that often gets shown to people in Bitcoin Cash. He's like, oh, look at all these double spend you guys have on Bcash, right? And, uh, so this is a site, it has a bunch of double spends that happen in Bitcoin Cash. And there's a first scene and a double, and sometimes the double wins. But most of the time, when these doubles win, it's, they are basically... Oh my god, thanks, hey, Space Toshi. Yo, I can't lie, I'm feeling oh, nice. Wow. Good. I just, I just got, got the bag of main pools. Um gets Colin. Hayden was exposing a bug. Yeah, I know they're not he wasn't defrauding anyone, he paid it right back. It was just thank you for exposing the bug. <laughs> yeah, so Hayden and Travel by Bake have this like they have this rivalry within Australia because they're basically going after the same market, right? Um which is <laughs> It's it's just funny because obviously Hayden pushes Bitcoin Cash and Travel by Bit is not like pushing Lightning. I mean they're sponsored by Binance. They literally like accept B and B on stores, which is just like the strangest thing. And it, it's an exchange token that you use for for less trading fees, but you can you can use it to buy coffee, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Triple spend, holy cow! And so yeah, this this site Double Spend Cash is very interesting to look at. There's a lot of first seen double spends, and sometimes the double spends win, but usually all the double spends are broadcast at, at literally the exact same time and so uh this zero conf problem has been researched a lot uh peter ryzen has done a talk on it i think it was actually in japan in tokyo like two years ago now yeah it was almost two years ago wow 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 and so uh it's basically a race so how how you would try to double spend on Bitcoin Cash right now because replaced by fee isn't a thing. You'd have to basically bribe a miner to do it is you would have like race conditions, right? And so you would, you would, there's a whole bunch of stats on this and Peter's way fucking smarter than me about this, but you'd basically like send a, send your first coin to, it would have to hit the merchant and then hit like a node in like China. And then you send another, your double spend transaction to, say somewhere in America if you're in America and you basically have to rely that your double spend your second spend that has the coins the same coins that you sent the merchant come back to you you have to make sh you have to have the merchant think that you sent them the coins but then the transaction uh, that should be relayed first um, from the American one um, has it come back to you uh, it's it's basically you wait a couple seconds and this problem goes away, right? And so uh, you'll see a lot of these double spends that happen at the exact same time. And so there's a bunch of stats on here. Now, let me go through this. So, yeah, the, the typical Twitter response is 
According to doublespend.cash slash stats, the chance for a successful double spend on Bcash per past seven days averages out to be a staggering 13%. Um, and so uh, what the heck is he talking about? So let's look at these charts here. What is he possibly talking about? So it says double spend attempts in total, 1,000. Second scene one is 1,500. So yeah, 10,000. So yeah, 13%. But again, so we scroll down a little bit. And then you go time between first scene and second scene. So these are the double spends that were successful. And you, as you can see, the majority of them are broadcasted at the exact same time. And a couple of them are one second. And then there's like one at two seconds. And then one at five seconds plus. I wish you could like look at this transaction. That was five seconds plus. But, uh, you know, it doesn't. You, you can't click through. I wish you could. But basically you wait a couple seconds and the chance of double spending goes to like nil. Um without replaced by fee, right? Without replaced by fee. So uh, on Bitcoin Cash, it's way harder to double spend, even though there's this handy website that literally a Bitcoin Cash developer maintains uh, that Bitcoin Core people used to, hey, look, you could double spend on Bcash. And it's like, no, actually look at it and look at it. And so uh, how do wallets kind of into the future, how do we kind of fix, fix even this? Like, let's even fix this, right? And so uh, we have double spend relay right now, which is in Bitcoin Unlimited nodes. I don't know if it's in ABC nodes. Uh, they allow for network-wide detection of double spends. So I think that's probably what this one does. Um, the site probably relies on that. And so the new thing coming out, uh, which you name needs to stop working on his PhD and write, uh, it's called double spend proofs. And essentially, all right, let me look up because... <laughs> Yeah, rather than relaying the double spends themselves, a proof is generated and relayed to warm the network that there exists a double spend of a transaction. And so, um, what does that mean? <laughs> Basically, when a node sees a double spend, it's like, yo guys, check this out, watch out. <laughs> there you go, that's a double spend proof for you. If you try to double spend, the network snitches to the merchant so he can whoop your ass before you leave. That's how he explained it to me in layman terms. So, uh, BitPay uh, used to have like a network of double spend nodes, apparently. Network watchers. He doesn't know if they're still operational, uh, but it's difficult to set up and maintain. Nobody else does it. Uh, double spend proof gives a better public version of that, basically. And so, instead of it being like just BitPay, that has it, double spend proof would be a network wide thing that sees it. So let's bombard column space tips. Oh no, don't do that. Yeah, d try and double spend to Bitcoin.cash. That'd be great. <laughs> so another RBF vector has attack parasites turn on themselves. Yeah, so I mean, the, the thing is, like, this RBF has like, always been a thing, right? And so uh, it's just another reason for BTC to not use <laughs> their coin in commerce. Uh, just to wait for lightning to scale properly and uh, make sure the merchant runs their own node. Otherwise, are you really even using Bitcoin? Are you really even using Bitcoin on the lightning network? And so, uh, but the thing is, it's prob this is how you would, wow, I really didn't have that up. This is how you would double spend with a credit card. And <laughs> these comments, man, I tweeted a lot today. Lots of retweets. I love scrolling. I love scrolling. Okay, so, uh, Tell me what's harder, this or Bitcoin Cash. How to double spend with a credit card. First, you buy a hamburger from McDonald's. Two, you eat this hamburger in the store. Of course, you have some time. You exit McDonald's, call American Express, say, hey, I lost my credit card. I see they just used it. Boom, free hamburger. You get your money back. You spend your money at McDonald's, and then you spend your money to yourself. <coughs> and uh, that's it's pretty. That's easy. Uh, BTC is probably easier because you don't have to call anybody you just do it on your phone and so bitcoin cash again you could attempt it but it needs specialized software that isn't developed uh, which could be which could be and then you need a miner to help you out as well and not follow the first scene rule so uh long long story short it's much easier to double spend on btc than bch but it's possible on both chains so we were warned about rbf years ago yep we, we definitely were we definitely were. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of what I got for that. So it's nuanced. It's nuanced. Zero conf isn't completely bulletproof, but zero conf is better than credit cards. <laughs>
So we're working on it. Uh, and then people say, yo, what about Dash? They got chain locks. I'd be like, which is like a second or two. I'd be like, yo, that's proof of stake. Don't you want proof of work, right? And so uh, I, don't know, I didn't really look into chain locks that much, but um, that's not Bitcoin. So I'm here for Bitcoin. I know it's a horrible reason, but that's all I got right now. <laughs> Uh, 2019 and still eating at McDonald's. Am I right? Oh, I had no. That was at Arby's. There was like a steak, sliced steak sandwich. There was like garlic. Oof, that was good. That was good. And so, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but we're gonna watch it. This is uh, from the BitcoinCash.org, which is essentially Bitcoin ABC. Uh, but they put together this awesome video, so we're gonna watch it. Disregard the logo color. Since the creation of Bitcoin in 2008, cryptocurrency has grown into a powerhouse. From its humble origins, the rise of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies has attracted the attention of businesses, governments, investors, and entrepreneurs across the globe. Some see cryptocurrency as a get-rich-quick fad, but others think that it can make currency better and safer. It was created actually after several iterations. So we've already tried to have electronic money on the internet, but it failed. And then finally, for the first time, we have a system where people who don't know each other, there's a technology, in this case, blockchain, that allows for peer-to-peer -peer transactions without a middleman, without a bank, without a government. You can sort of see it like a decentralized database. And oh, the there point is. of blockchain is to make sure that one consistent state that that has been built up over time. The system that's created around Bitcoin allows that transfer of value to be frictionless and seamless and instant uh, and, and really inexpensive. There's a few key differences between cryptocurrency and traditional money systems that make it valuable. The traditional banking system uh, is heavily built on trust and that introduces some, some issues like you go to an ATM and there's an ATM withdrawal limit. You try to send money to someone in your family and the, there's like an ACH transaction limit. So with cryptocurrency, we can, we can do away with a lot of these problems. So if I, if I want to use my own money, I should be able to have access to it. Looking cryptocurrency great. is a safer and more convenient alternative to bills or notes. What future cryptocurrency entrepreneurs want next is skipping the need for banks and credit card companies. Without the need for intermediaries, financial power could be put into the hands of consumers. Cryptocurrency are built in such a way that no single entity has, you know, the control of the power over what happened in, in that cryptocurrency. As a result, you don't have this kind of risk factor where you rely on someone specifically. You are in control of your own money instead of relying on someone that controls your money to do what you want them to do. That, that's really, you know, that's really what is at the core of it. How we value each other as human beings, I think, is the key. And Bitcoin Bitcoiners has outside. allowed people to fake, share that value news. directly without third-party intermediaries. Bitcoins don't go outside. <laughs> and they were looking happy. <laughs> Bitcoin Cash is enabling commerce and free trade by putting financial power back into the hands of consumers. Bitcoin Cash helps by giving people more control and transferring value in an easy-to-use service that is affordable and inclusive. In 2014, 2015, Bitcoin became much more popular, right? Much more people started using it and it started causing technical problems. Faction of the community don't want it to change anything about Bitcoin. <laughs> and a faction of the community wanted to change Bitcoin in such a way that it can accommodate more user and you know keep having the good user experience. Because these two different softwares have different uh, rules, they disagree about what's the state of the ledger. So as a result, the blockchain split apart. So now Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Core are distinct currencies. For people that work on Bitcoin Cash, well, the thing that joins <laughs> us together is not really an organizational structure, but rather a, a goal. There's a roadmap that is constantly referred to in the Bitcoin Cash community. That roadmap defines how everyone sees Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Cash being has. Oh, a couple professionals. Years from now. It's this ability to exchange, it's this ability to, to transact with each other. And that has to be cheap, reliable, and fast. 
You know, that's what we want. Other blockchains out Nailed there it. or other cryptocurrencies, I think, are not as determined to make that goal possible. Bitcoin Cash is focused on utility and that that is the, the value that is being provided to Pizza toast sucks. Don't being able to send and so any amount of money anywhere dollar. in the world send for send little to no fees very quickly. By combining the safety and reliability of sound money and the freedom and speed of the internet, Bitcoin Cash makes purchases and money transfers fast and with low fees. The biggest hurdle, I think, is just for people to learn about this. People just need to use it. Get learned. I think once people start using it and see how easy it is <laughs> and <laughs> that it makes sense in their life, for people to trust it, for people to make that switch. So the big problems that are coming up are going to be the scaling of the network. We want to be able to handle billions of users. I'm hoping that when it's more not a problem, dude. Come, come know, on, you're Bitcoin we Cash. The, we scale, bro. Not just the the basic Bitcoin protocol working well, but also have the user friendly side of things working very nicely. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> grandma's gonna use Bitcoin, and you know, it can't be like it is right now. It has to be easier. I think we're heading Big in the right news. direction now. Hanging out outside. Rough ten years, getting us to this point. It's pretty obvious that the direction is good. Everybody is going to have a different solution at the end, right, to the world problems that we have today. But Bitcoin Cash is just, I think it's, I think it's just so clear that it's for people. It's very clear that it's just to be used. And I think the developers who are behind this project are very aware of that. And that is their goal. To learn more, visit BitcoinCash.org. So yeah, great video, great video. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I like how it makes a... Eleanor look like she's like a developer. I mean, I love Eleanor. Eleanor is wonderful. Eleanor is wonderful. Oh yeah, I missed one tab. So here's one of the year. So what makes Bitcoin Cash safer than uh, BTC? Well, most miners operate by a first seen safe rule, which will not replace transactions by ones with a higher fee. If ones really need to bump their transaction up, they need to use child pays for parent transactions or collude with a miner. And so what is child pays for parent? Well, instead of replacing the whole transaction, uh, your second transaction has basically like enough fees to cover that transaction and your first transaction. So that first transaction still goes through. It doesn't have a different, a different uh, recipient. It just kind of gives it an extra fee. So miners are incentivized to include both of them. So uh, blocks are not full on Bitcoin Cash. So that window for double spending is much smaller so there you go hanging out in the sun fake devs come just be happy i didn't have my old laptop but even more greasy and held together with tape. <laughs> nice 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 all right well i'm gonna wrap it up here on youtube uh feel free to come join me on d live so i'm just gonna wrap it up so we have a nice little time so people don't be like wow this episode is an hour no i'm gonna i don't have time for an hour show well it's only 38 minutes so they can watch it so uh I'm literally going to be doing the same shit for at least another hour. So, uh, so, uh, you know, it's okay. So, but first, before I go off YouTube, BCH is team up with Peloton. Now you're talking Toba. Um, uh, my new favorite Twitter account or Instagram. This is, um, did I spell it wrong? A. I a oh Jesus let me look at my phone where's my phone my new favorite my new favorite holy crap there's a lot of dog hair on this yo my data is being so slowly I don't know why I was doing an A it's a fucking K K Y yeah, here we go. Everybody's new favorite Instagram account. It's Jim Friend, everybody. Look at this. Look at the muscles. Oof. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Look at them cars. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. He has a name. His name is Kyrian. Try and get him on the show. That'd be a good guest to have. So my favorite part about... um, He's actually has been involved in blockchain. Now, he's not just gym guy <laughs> I gotta find it but uh, guys I hope you enjoy this Instagram oh yeah <laughs> alright
Alright, I need to find this quick before I can get too uncomfortable here. <laughs> um, just, damn, look at that guy. <laughs> Okay, where is it? Where is it? Oh my gosh, she has so many pictures. I swear it's in here somewhere. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. That has to be it. Is this it? Introducing equity crowdfunding. I think that's the. There's like a poster for it though. I want the poster. As you can tell, I, re I did my research. Is this it? Hmm, no, it doesn't look like it. Hmm. Almost there. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't even think I've gotten done this far before. There's some talking again. Oh, a transformer. Awesome. I wonder how much he can bench. That's what he says. <laughs> awesome transformer. Okay. <laughs> I gotta wrap this up. <laughs> Is this it? I think this might be it. Oh, no. No, that's not it. That's not it. Um, hmm. Let's see. We're almost there. <laughs> okay, I'm about to close this tab. <laughs> this is the most viewers I've had. It's just looking at Instagram photos. Maybe I need to switch switch topics. All right, today we're gonna talk about gym and lifting supplements and what you should use to put in your body okay <laughs> i definitely have not been this far before <laughs> is this it uh that no it doesn't look like it calling a gundam and transformer uh sorry <laughs> i have seen that in real life though so I, I apologize if that makes it any better i've seen that gundam in real life all right all right i'm over this <laughs> all right Meet me on YouTube or meet me on D Live. Link is in the description. <laughs> Alright, bye. God damn it. This person will go to D Live TV slash God. <laughs> oh my god. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from Kiri Jim Friend. Ho ho ho. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to be back on till the new year. So, uh, come hang on a deal. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mer Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. I hope you get the best gifts. And I hope it's delivered to you by a big, strong man.